Well, welcome and thank you for joining us today for WISE Present Should I Lease or Buy a Car. My name is Stephanie King and I'm a WISE board member. WISE is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to empower women and girls through education in personal finance. And today I'm joined by Tina Shackman, a WISE advisory board member and also a financial services professional with over 20 years in the industry. Tina has graciously joined us today to share her wisdom on planning for large car, large purchases. And specifically in this case, we're gonna talk about the lease versus buy decision when considering a new car. Um, before we get started, I have just one caveat. Of course, in Tina's work as an investment professional, she provides education and advice to her clients. Um, in this case, um, we are not able to tailor um, any advice to any of our viewers' unique circumstances. Um, it's just not possible in this format, of course, so this interview is going to focus solely on education. And with that, um, thank you again, Tina, for being here today and sharing your wisdom. I understand that um, you have some experience in this topic personally in terms of buying or leasing um, cars. So would you like to share that with us? Sure, certainly. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, well, if we go back to 1986, I got my very first car. I had just moved out from Wisconsin to California. And of course I needed a convertible. Uh, and I decided I had my eye fixed on a Fiat Spider convertible. And I'd saved money from my, my summer jobs and I had $2,000 and that was it. I was getting this car, so I did. And after spending months and months with a mechanic, getting this car fixed over and over again, finally, my mechanic, who I was on a first name basis with, uh, actually became a friend at the time, uh, told me what Fiat stood for. He said it stood for fix it again, Tony. <laughs> so I learned very early on that I wanted to get a reliable, low maintenance car. And for the next 30 years, I ended up uh, buying or leasing a Honda or an Acura. Um, and what one thing that I did find myself doing, which was not really a good habit, was I was an early adopter. So anytime there was a new model, I wanted to have it. So I found myself in a leasing cycle where I could I would lease it, and then I might buy it out of the lease, and then I'd sell it and get into another lease. And and so it just it kind of kept going over and over. Um, so I'm really glad that Wise is having this discussion. Well, good. Well, I remember those Fiat Spider convertibles, and I uh, <laughs> certainly envy you for um, for giving it a try. Although, of course, I understand um, some of the headaches involved with driving um, with driving that car. Um, well, as you've described, choosing a, a car is a big decision, and um, whether it's whether it's a car acquisition or some other big purchases, do you have some general rules of thumb that you um, you would suggest to guide large purchase decisions? Yeah, I, I typically look at three key factors that really help drive the decision. So the first thing is just looking at the length of ownership, you know, really understanding how long you want to own, own the vehicle. And the second is your strength of ownership. So how much time and energy and money do you want to put into maintaining it? And the last is the affordability, you know, understanding a need versus a want and, and simply put, a need is something that you need to live and function and a want is, is something that's gonna improve your quality of life. So understanding uh, basically what level of, level of affordability you have at that time. Right. Yeah, that's a wonderful point. I think in Southern California, I think cars often fit the need category, but I guess in terms of um, how expensive a car you choose is going to distinguish the need versus want. Um, thanks for, for sharing these rules of thumb with us. Um, so for someone looking to acquire a new car, unless, some, unless that person has a large sum of money already saved, she's most likely going to need to finance it. Um, there are two ways to do that. Um, what's the key distinction between taking out uh, a loan to buy a car versus um, leasing a car? Mm -hmm. So if you're taking out a loan, a portion of that loan payment is going to go toward the interest on the loan, and then the rest is going to pay down the principal. So at the end of that loan term, you're going to own that vehicle. 
and you can do whatever you'd like with it. You can keep driving it, you don't have to make any more payments, or you can sell it for, the, for its current market value. Um, if you're going to lease, the lease payment is, is similar to a rental payment. You're going to borrow that car and repay the difference between what the car's value is when you bought it and the value of the car when you expect to return it or at the end of that lease, plus any finance charges. Great. That's very clear. Um, it's wonderful that consumers have choices. Um, you made... Um, you made the key distinctions very clear. I bet there are more details behind that. I know you have an, an infographic showing the pros and cons. So are you able to um, share that uh, chart with us? I am. So let me pull that up and on just, screen. And just bear in mind for anybody listening, as opposed to, to viewing, uh, Tina is going to cover everything that she's showing on screen. But if you'd like to see it, um, just check out our video posted to wiseinvestors.org. So on the screen right now, I have a chart and it lists out the pros and cons of buying a vehicle versus leasing. So if we first talk about purchasing a vehicle, the pros to that is that you'll eventually own it and you can sell it at any time. You don't have to worry about having any mileage restrictions. You can modify the vehicle if you'd like, and it may last in many years, it can last 10, 15 years, depending on your driving style and, and, and how much you put into maintaining the vehicle. The cons to buying a vehicle is that you are going to have higher monthly payments. You will have to incur maintenance costs as the vehicle ages, and it is a depreciating asset. So the longer you keep it, the less value that it will have. And at some point, you may have to negotiate selling it. So there could be additional um, effort into, into disposing the vehicle. Um, you may decide to donate it or you want to sell it on, on third market or you can take it to a, a CarMax or a Carvana and, and let them dictate what, what they want to buy for the vehicle. Um, when you look at the lease, the pros to a lease um, are very desirable. You have a lower monthly payment. You get a new car every few years. You don't have to worry so much about repairing repair costs or maintenance costs and you don't have those selling house hassles. On the flip side, you're never gonna own that vehicle. You're going to have limited mileage. And just to know, whenever you see those advertisements for those low monthly lease payments, most of the time they're basing that on a $7,500 or 7,500 mile, um, you're driving it for 7,500 miles a year. And we know in California, that's um, not always that realistic. Um, you may incur additional wear and tear charges um, at the end of that lease. And when you do lease, you do have to carry higher insurance coverage and that'll lead to higher insurance premiums. These are all um, really helpful points, Tina, and, and certainly point out things I didn't even realize like the higher insurance payments um, that go along with lease payments. Um, one thing that jumps out at me in particular is that the monthly payment for a lease is lower than the monthly loan payment for purchase, at least of a comparable car. So does that mean that I might be able to lease a car that's a lot nicer than what I could afford to buy? You can, and many do. <laughs> There's actually a statistic that says, shows 86% of luxury car owners are not millionaires. So they're, they're average people um, typically buying a, a or getting into a vehicle that might be a little above um, their affordability level. Um, but keep in mind, as we've mentioned earlier, that your monthly insurance costs will likely be higher with the lease um, and you could be responsible for any additional costs at the, at the end of that lease term. Um, and you might have to pay additional, uh, um, additional fees if you exceed the mileage limitations. So if you were to really think about over the long term, those that who always lease their cars versus those that buy and hold their car for you know, seven to 10 years are likely gonna spend more money. And I can tell you that when I found myself leasing a car and then buying it out of the lease and then trying to sell it again, I spent a lot more money than if I had just ended up buying that car in the first place. Uh, and something that I've learned over the years is when you are negotiating a lease with a the dealer, they try and negotiate based on the monthly payment. And that monthly payment for a lease is based on three variables. 
The first is the purchase price, and they call it a capitalization cost. The second is the interest rate or the money factor. And then that third is the residual value or that estimated market value at the end of the lease. So if you can lease a car that holds its value, think Toyota or Honda, then that payment differential between what the purchase price is and the residual value will be smaller because you'll have a higher residual value because the vehicle is holding its value. And that will lead to smaller lease payments. So therefore, if you focus on those three variables, um, that's gonna allow you to negotiate the best monthly payment. So don't let that dealer negotiate that monthly payment without understanding what those three variables are. And, and prudent consumers who are really looking for ways to save money and build long-term wealth really would um, be well served to resist that urge to, to keep up with the Joneses and try and buy that, you know, that much more luxury or performance car. Most prudent financial decisions is to buy a reliable used car, drive it for as long as it's safely operational, and then use that extra monthly payment after it's paid off to invest in assets that appreciate like equities or, or a home. And another thing to consider is the interest rate environment. In a low interest rate environment, some dealers may offer 0% financing to buy a car. And if you have good credit, which you need anyway to for a lease, it may make sense to take advantage of attractive financing offers. And then I'll leave you with this last thought. So look for ways to get discounts on vehicles. Um, Triple A or Costco sometimes have discount programs. So many times you get an opportunity to negotiate the MSRP or manufacturer's suggested retail price. And the keyword there is suggested. Mm -hmm. Well, that's wonderful, Tina. Thank you. I've gotten so much out of this. I think, um, you know, if I point to one key takeaway for me, and that I think applies to what we try to um, empower in our wise investors is to really consider affordability, to consider um, all the other things you might do um, with your money um, instead of um, putting it into a depreciating asset. Any money saved on this um, car decision can be put toward potentially a better use of an asset that's more likely to appreciate. So thank you for that. I think that's a great way to end our conversation on leasing versus buying cars. Thank you, Tina. Thank you.